Yo crypto hustlers. With you Cyberdark, and today we will discuss an interesting token that a subscriber sent me. This token is intriguing, because the owner has renounced ownership. We can see that the owner address here is set to a null address. It's also evident that the liquidity of this token was locked. But this token has successfully scammed, and we're analyzing it after the fact. My active subscriber is asking me, was it possible analyzing the code? This token, understand that it has some prerequisites and hints of a scam. Well, let's take a look together. When I first opened the code of this token, I didn't immediately find the code here responsible for its scam. For the sensor in question, the token at some point will become a Honeybot token, and it will only be available for purchase if you're not a member to some whitelist, and it can't be sold back to the liquidity pair. But then, I found this piece of code. You see it on the screen now too, I highlighted it. Let's take a closer look at it. This piece of code does not execute every time. Its main function is that it is executed strictly only after a certain volume of commission accumulates on this contract. Only in the data tokens, a token collects a fee. There is a variable minimum tax swap, or furnace dame, upon reaching which this code block works accordingly. It works absolutely for all users. Except for those who are in the is excluded array, where owner even before that. As, how he relinquished ownership, including himself, and a certain developer address. A developer wallet. For everyone else not included in this array, accordingly, the tokens that are supposedly for commission, they are converted you see, into a classic Ethereum token. Our contract balance will immediately reflect this Ether after the transaction. If there was Ether in the balance, if there was something to exchange, if there was anything at all, meaning the pool wasn't empty yet. So be careful then. We're making a call to another function, to send EOS as a fee. In the amount that it exists in the current balance of this contract, that's the essence of the scam. That is, all the ether that appeared on the balance of this contract, we send as a fee to some address. Let's check out this simple function. We see here a translation of a regular native ether to an address presumably belonging to the creator of this scam. Dev wallet. And actually, regarding the code of this particular section, at first glance, it's unclear what is happening here and why this transaction could be reverted. But still, if we look into this smart contract more closely, we'll find out that Def Wallet is not just a wallet. A certain smart contract. Let's open it now separately on Etherscan. We see that this is some smart contract with unverified code. As we already know from the experience with the Ethereum virtual machine architecture, when we send native Ether to an address of just a wallet or some user, it's always accepted it cannot be rejected. But if we're sending Ether to the address of some smart contract, it doesn't have to be accepted. It can be rejected, and then a revert of this transaction will occur. If we return, that's when the revert will happen. Both the transfer itself and the revert of the send function from EOS to fee, respectively, and then this whole block will be reversed. The whole function containing it, which contains this block, meaning the entire transfer function in this case will be reverted. Moreover, this reversal might not always occur depending on certain conditions that are already included in this unverified contract, which we, in turn, cannot look, but we can assume in general what might be written there. I didn't cover this smart contract with unit tests because, because it collects a fee on transfers, and that's only planned in our future lessons on developing ERC-20 tokens. But I've prepared for you in my local network. Another small but important example that shows how to refuse the reception of Ether. In some logic of your token, it might turn it into a honeypot. I based it on the honeypot we discussed earlier in the third video lesson of the ERC-20 token development course. And the Warden Smart Contract, which in this case manages the refusal to accept Ether, has changed a bit here, and in that smart contract, which is not verified by us, lying at the deaf wallet address. 
And maybe there's some kind of code like this in the receive function? Here I am checking that if the ether did not come from the owner of this contract, we must reject it. With a certain error, the function receive always executes by that other smart contract if it receives native tokens. If there's no receive function in the contract, revert always occurs. But I believe in that smart contract, which we considered that revert does not always execute, but also depends on certain conditions. So, what did I change in our mechanic? Under the token. Previously, we wrapped the warden's address in a specific interface, assuming it has some function for registers transfer. So now we're deploying this warden smart contract, we label it simply as a payable address. Accordingly, in our smart contract constructor, we assign the warden address the payable. From that very address Varden, who came to us in the constructor before we could send ether to it via the transfer function. And in before token transfer, I check if the balance of this contract is more than zero. Since I'm not picking up a commission here then, we will have to artificially send a certain amount of ether to the address of this smart contract for it to become a honeypot. And now we're sending this balance to the very same address of our warden smart contract as part of the commission. And accordingly, our smart contract warden does not accept this ether. Thus, the whole before token transfer function is not executed since it takes place during the transfer function. Our token transfer will not proceed. The transfer of our given coveted token. What did I write here in the unit test? The unit test remains roughly the same as it was in our previous lesson on honeypots. So now I, I won't go into details about it. In my first test, I'm going to check that a buyer can purchase honeypot token. In the second test, I check if he can buy it and sell it while on our Honey Potter contract. There is no ether we could send as a commission. In the third test, our buyer purchases our Honey Pot token, and then sells it. And then we, sending part of the ether to the Honey Pot contract. We're simulating the situation where a commission has piled up on it, so the logic enters the branch for sending ether. Accordingly, at our address, a smart honeypot token forms some ether, and after that, usually, customers will no longer be able to sell their token. That's exactly what we'll check in this unit test. Let me run it. The test passes successfully, and he shows you how rejecting ether intake turns a regular token into a real honeypot. So, what conclusion can we draw from this situation? It turns out that by reading the smart contract code, if you see transfer to a certain hard-coded address, it doesn't matter if it's directly set in the smart contract code, like it is here, or if it happens at the address of some wallet or smart contract that's simply stored in storage, and storage as you know can be read. So, first off, you should check if this destination address is a regular wallet. Either it's a contract that is not verified. And if this smart contract is not verified, you should understand that this place might, when the so-called denial of service occurs, meaning the broadcast won't be accepted on that end, it leads to failure. Roll back all those transactions, of all those functions, that contained within them this function, wrapped in some others, like a Russian nesting doll. Crypto hustlers, let's give it up for this awesome video on scam tokens. I hope this helps someone out in our tough hustle. Don't forget to hit up the CryptoHustle.io forum. You can ask all your questions about crypto's shady side there. Check out the description below the video for everything you need. Subscribe and roll with the Dark Legion.